final question for you. It has to do with iron. The diet you're eating, you're taking in a massive amount of iron. Is having an iron overload a concern for you at all? Yeah, that's a good question. So first of all, um, iron overload is again, in, and we see it, you know, one of the markers people look at it, ferritin, but there's a lot of complex physiology going on with the iron. But we know that it's hard to get rid of iron once we absorb it. I mean, there's ways, you know, women menstruate, some exercise, there's some evidence that you can break it down a little bit through heavy exercise. But iron, when you accumulate, it's hard to get rid of. And so what does our body do? Uh, let's just assume that human beings ate a lot of meat growing up as humans, and I think we did. So what do we have as a mechanism to regulate how much iron we absorb? And this is where we this is where we sort of regulate that. So there's a hormone called hepcidin. Hepcidin is produced by the liver. And what it does is it, it impacts the ability of our gut to absorb iron. And so when hepcidin is produced, it decreases the enterocytes, the cells that line our gut, ability to absorb iron. And one of the things we see is that hepcidin secondarily comes under the control of insulin. And so what we're seeing is um, when people have insulin regulation, diabetic pathophysiology, metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, that's not functioning well. This probably secondarily impacts our iron handling capacity. So if you have, this is why we see the relationship with high iron and diabetes, is that when you have this problem with insulin regulating hepcidin, you have inappropriate absorption of iron. Whereas when everything's working well, that iron that you're eating, you may not absorb it. So you just, it goes, it goes in the toilet basically. So you, your body will absorb what you need and just discard what you don't. And so I think that's the way it's worked throughout time because I think humans ate a lot of meat growing up as humans and a lot of red meat at that. So when we do see people with iron overload, almost invariably you'll see some problem with metabolic syndrome of some type, whether it's prediabetes, diabetes, hyperinsulinemia, inappropriate hepcidin levels. And so I think that's where the that's where the, the breaking point is. So yes, if you are diabetic and have you know ongoing issues, you know, iron could accumulate, but you know, we might see even more problem with non-heme iron because non-heme iron is, you know, what you get from plants and what's fortified and that may even have a, a bigger impact than how it's how it's absorbed and stored. So anyway, but yeah, iron, it can be a concern for sure. But for the most part, and I've seen people with actually hemochromatosis, which is this genetic disposition to, to way accumulate iron in, in all these organs in the liver and kidneys, and they have to give blood every, every week or so, or every two weeks, actually see their iron dramatically drop despite eating a full carnivorous diet, which is interesting because I think they, they, they fix the iron handling absorption side of the equation through improving their metabolic issues. Uh, and then they no longer need to uh, do that. So yeah, it's interesting. That is a good concern though.